Hi, I'm Perry Grodzinski. What's the good news? God finds us. We don't find God. God finds us. That's the good news. Eventually, if we find ourselves, what we find out is that we find that there is one that has loved us from the beginning with an everlasting, unquenchable love. That's the good news. I'm going to tell you a story of redemption that uh, is just so worthy to give God attention and, and uh, testimony on, on what he does when he comes seeking one of his children. <clears throat> this summer I had the pleasure of, of uh, meeting this wonderful brother. Uh, and he, uh, we got to talk and we had uh, some questions. We were camping, had some questions about, uh, about uh, trailers and this and that. And, and so we got to just, just chatting. And uh, through the week, we would chat off and on and, and getting to know each other. And, uh, well, what do you do for a living? And what do you do for a living? And I said, well, was in, uh, in the business of IT for over 30 years, but uh, now I uh, follow Jesus. That's what I do. And um, so anyways, we got to know each other. And... and uh, he came to me the one day and he just said, uh, can I talk to you, Perry? I said, yeah, absolutely. And I and, uh, was just having a coffee and sitting down at the campfire. So, so we went for a walk. And he proceeded to tell me the most beautiful story of a God that loves us uh, with, a, I guess, a, again, an unquenchable pursuance of of capturing our hearts at the time he didn't really know that that's what was going on but he was he was giving me testimony first of all about just some some issues of life uh, that he was having we all have issues all of us are broken in some way and uh, he's coming to that place in his life and, and just realizing this. And, and um, he was seeing things like some, something, somebody was trying to get his attention. And he, and he told me things that he was seeing as he would be out on the lake and whatnot and in, uh, under the canopy of, of God's beautiful nature. And he was seeing things, and he says, you're not going to believe. Uh, this is going to be really hard for you to believe. And I said, brother, there is, there is nothing uh, that is too strange when it comes to God's love. We've seen a lot, of, a lot of miracles take place. God was using nature. God was using the things of his creation to get this brother's attention to let him know how much he loved him, to let him know that he was pursuing him. There was like some past history where I think uh, he felt like, you know, any encounters he had with God is, is he felt like God was either sad or mad with him and he wasn't too happy with God either. And this is, this is so much my story, so I could really uh, resonate with what he was telling me. But I told him about a God's love that uh, was, that some would say, you've heard the term that heaven went bankrupt, but a loving father that sent his dearest possession, his son Jesus, to die for us on the cross. And that there was nothing that was going to get in the way between him and us as children as he pursued us for his desire that all would be saved and none would perish. So as we talked more and reflected, I, I told him about how much God loved him and had a wonderful plan for his life. 
we talked more and I asked, you know, do you know for certain, you know, can I ask you a question? Do you know for certain beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you were to die in the next few seconds that you would go to heaven? He says, no, Perry, I, I don't know that. I says, because you can know that. You can know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. For God's word in the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you're a whosoever, right? Of course, we all are. And, you know, I said, let me pray for you. And uh, so we pray, I prayed for him and said, if it's your desire, you know, just just say these words after me uh, from your heart and from your lips. You know, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I give you my life. I ask for you to come and be my Savior and my Lord. So he followed through. And so the kingdom was populated by yet another. And it just blows me away that, you know, we have told people about Jesus in the past and and uh, spent time on the streets sometimes telling of God's love. And, you know, the Bible also says that the, uh, the wages of sin is death, which is essentially separation from God forever. But that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But you know, this time, all I had to do, there was nothing for me to do except to get out of my chair, set down my coffee cup. Because the Holy Spirit is doing the heavy lifting. He is searching for His children. He is as the hound of heaven. He looks from corner to corner, top to bottom. and He's searching for His children. So I give Him all praise and glory. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that at any split moment in time, he would leave the 99 and go after the one. Maybe that's you. Know that there's no hill he won't climb up, no mountain he won't climb up, no shadow he won't light up to find you. He loves you with an everlasting love. So I hope you're encouraged by this story. I certainly was. It was like it was like God was pursuing this brother and loving on this brother. And his testimony even to me later is, Perry, it's like I have a brand new life. It's like everything changed. Everything changed in an instant. So I just want to encourage you that today is the day of salvation. Just be available. For those that of you that know Jesus and follow Jesus, just be available. Just be available. Let the Holy Spirit use you. And to those of you who haven't said, yes, Jesus, be my Savior, be my Lord, know that He loves you and He is pursuing you. Thanks for your time. God bless you.